Well, I was going to do a speed test on this car today, but um, I just got back from Cody, Wyoming, and I got caught in a couple of snowstorms going both directions, so I didn't get a, I'm not going to have a chance to do it. It's already dark here, but these are the uh, tires I was showing you in the video. Make sure the camera's actually going. Okay. So I got two things I want to do today. Uh, one of them is I want to put these tires on this car. The other one is I want to talk about pulling the screws out of here. Um, for I've, there's several people that are having some issues with this with soft screws. Now they may in fact be soft screws. I don't know. I can't say that they're not. But what I will say is uh, one, one thing I have seen some people do is try to use automotive screwdrivers to do stuff like this. And it, I've not had good luck with it. So, and these are, it appears to me, eh, they might touch, but I don't think they're going to bind up. So there's one. <laughs> yeah, it looks kind of funny with just one. It probably look, it might look funny with four. I don't know. We'll see. We are about to find out. And uh, for for twenty five bucks, you can get two of these tires and a sticker. Not sure what I'll do with the sticker yet. I'll find something. Anyway. Um, I'm going to show you something real quick as soon as I get a, get the other wheel on here, if I can get the hex out. And one of the things that I see people do using the automotive screwdrivers is they, they use them way too long. And I'll illustrate this in just a second. Get this other big old honking tire on here. And make sure that the it's going to steer in both directions before I put the back ones on. Yeah, that's going to work. Um, see if I can get this to zoom in. All right, this is an automotive screwdriver. Let me see if I can do something better. There we go. And you can see how how much that's rounded off. And I'm still not going to quite focus. There you go. You can see how much that's rounded off. I don't use this for anything but poking holes in cans anymore. So um, let me grab another bit real quick. I'm not very good at real quick when I get the camera rolling for some reason, but I'll do my best. All right. You take this screwdriver as an example and you see how sharp and crisp the edges are so now this one obviously is is used and it's about ready to be thrown away but these are are not used very much at all so they if you find the right size screw uh, the right size screwdriver for the uh, screw that you're using you have a lot more luck with it and then if you can get a, a large enough handle that you can get a good grip on it and keep this thing square as straight as possible in the screw i'm not going to say it's always going to get the thing out but you're, you stand a way better chance than using an automotive style screwdriver so what i do at christmas every year uh, walmart will put these things on sale so i've got this one and this one this one this one this one's uh i think these are kind of soft too but uh i've got a, a big variety of sizes in there but this one and this one's actually pretty nice um, it opens up and then you've got a uh, the tray pops up for all your different sizes it's got nut drivers and hexes and squares and flat blades and phillips and 
It's even got the little triangular ones and the security screws and stuff like that. So that's a pretty handy one to have. And then I've got this thing here, which has a, a bazillion bits that uh, come with it. And it, it's electric and it's, it doesn't have enough power to break anything loose that's uh, stuck well, but it's got a light on it and you got your forward and reverse. Once you break the screws loose, this makes pretty short work of uh, screwing them out. And if you know what you're gonna do, you can put one sleeve of these bits in there and the screwdriver, and then it, it uh, has this nifty little carrying case, but there's not enough room for everything. Anyway, you, you know, in my opinion, you can never have too many good tools. And I've got, uh, one of the guys contacted me today and he's having issues with his servo screws. And I'm not sure if he's talking about these two in the chassis or not. I'm assuming that those are the ones that he's talking about. You have to get those out to get to the, uh, to the one on the servo arm. So um, I'll, I'll illustrate this if I can find the right size bit and see this one see this this one is too loose it wiggles around this little piggy I'm pretty sure is too big and see that one that one won't go in there at all I'm curious if my uh, Automotive screwdriver, well, this one won't. I've got some smaller ones that are in as bad a shape as that one is. So this uh, number one Phillips looks like it's gonna be the magic potion for this particular screw. And I don't know if these things are Loctited in or, or what. But see this one, there's, there's, no, uh, there's no slop in there. So I'm thinking if you get a good enough screwdriver with enough leverage and keep this in here straight, I think, yeah, that's, that's coming out. See on this one, yeah, that's coming out. I know that a lot of guys have been having trouble pulling the motor mounts out. So let's see if I can break one of those loose. Yeah, I can. Break the motor mount loose with it. A little extra pressure. And I got that one loose. Now, if you've already stripped these screws out, which I think is the case a lot, I keep some of these old bits on hand, the ones that are worn out. And what I'll do is I'll get, I'll, I'll actually, uh, get a little dab of epoxy. I usually use JB Weld, but I'll actually glue or epoxy the bit into the screw. Let it set for a day or so, and then it, uh, it unscrews. Uh, you gotta throw the bit away, or you could actually maybe chisel it off. But I, that's the reason I keep the old bits, is just for to make them sacrificial. So, since I'm not ready to take my servo and stuff out, or the motor mounts out, I'm going to tighten that back up. I'll do that off camera. Let me finish the tires. Now I'm going to shut up and uh, fast forward through this. Well, that looks pretty aggressive. Now, it does not bottom out anymore. So that's, uh, that's a plus. For those that don't know, or hadn't seen the other video leading up to this, there's supposed to be a modification so that you can run this car on 3S. I haven't tried it yet. I'm putting the big tires on here. Um, 
I've run some speed tests on 3S and and I did not if it, if the ESC got hot it wasn't hot enough to notice at the time. I ran this on paddle tires in the snow and it loaded the motor up significantly more and the ESC was so hot I couldn't even put my finger on it for just just long enough to say ouch and uh, that was it. So I'm putting these on here and I realize it's going to gear the car up and I realize it's going to make the ES, it's going to overload the ESC, but that's my intention. And what I'm going to do, I've got a digital uh, thermometer, infrared thermometer, and I'm going to run it with the body off. I, I just want to hit it, run it just stock, then I'm going to do the modification, then I'm going to come back, run it approximately as close as I can to the same way, and then see if there is a difference in temperature of the ESC. I'm not planning on uh, burning the ESC up. That's uh, I, I really intend to try hard not to do that because I'm going to use this motor and this ESC and the uh, servo. This car is being converted to brushless. So I'm going to take everything out of here, radio and all, and I'm going to build a recovery boat um, in case your RC boat gets out in the water and flips over. I'll, I'm going to build a recovery boat to go out and fetch that boat with. Uh, and I want to use all of the guts, the electronics out of this car. So. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put it on 3S and I'm going to do a speed test because this would run 40 miles an hour on 3S with the stock tires and just for the sake of curiosity, I want to see if the uh, top speed changes. But it is nighttime here. I have to go to Montana tomorrow and when I get back from there, it's going to be nighttime again. So, And same thing on Sunday. So next Monday, weather permitting, I'm going to take this out, do a speed test on 3s just like it sits then i'm going to pull the body off and do the temperature tests and do the modification on the motor and then do the speed test again not the speed test but the temperature test on the esc and if there's a difference in the the temperature on the esc i'll then put the body back on and do a gps speed test and see if the modification also makes it faster. So a bunch of testing coming up on this car. I just have to have daylight to do it, and I will not have any daylight until Monday. And weather permitting, uh, that's when this is going to happen. But I wanted to give you guys an update on what's going on right now. And I personally, I like the look of that. Although uh, I think if you were going to run this on a, a permanent basis, uh, I may I may try a 2S battery and see if it uh, if the ESC holds up to that too. But what I was about to say is, if you're going to do this on a permanent basis, I think you're going to want to uh, change the pinion gear out and go to a smaller pinion because I really think this is going to be geared way too high for this in this uh, motor and this ESC. So I rambled enough, and I didn't even have my coffee today. So there you go. And I will, um, add, hopefully, I will do all of the rest of this stuff that I just laid out on Monday, this next coming Monday. Hey, I just wanted to give you guys a quick uh, A-B comparison between the two cars so that you could see it real time. This is my version 1 car. This is my version 2 car. Uh, for any of you that don't know what that means, I've got another video uh, comparing these two. The, the primary difference is this one has a different uh, switch that's built into the ESC, and this one has longer axles. Which brings me to this point. If you're going to put these tires on a version 1 car, it's going to be extremely difficult to keep them on there. This, these tires are made for a larger scale car, and so consequently the uh, rims are made out of thicker plastic and the nuts just barely are flush on the version 2 car. So on the version 1 car, even with the factory wheels, uh, they're, they're just not quite flush. So if you put those, uh, the big tires and with a thicker plastic on this car, I, you're going to have to glue the wheels on, lock tight them or something, or they're just going to fall off. I don't think you're going to have more than a couple of threads on there. So anyway, for all of you guys that are already subscribers, I appreciate it. You're what makes all this happen. And uh, 
if you're not a subscriber if you want to if you're interested in seeing what i'm going to do with this car after all this testing is done this car is going to be converted to brushless and I, as far as what these tires do i don't know they they may be part of the brushless setup uh, the brushless setup that i've got right now is capable of running 2s and 3s new radio new servo uh, new esc and uh, and a brushless conversion i'm going to do a 2845 just for no reason other than nobody else has done that so far so if you want to keep track of that uh, subscribe if you know somebody else that's interested share it with them and i would appreciate it you guys are what makes all this happen thanks again and we'll catch you down the road Thank mm -hmm. you.